right, welcome back. As of February 22nd, 2024, Eagle Dynamics released the latest version of DCS, along with it came with a bunch of additions, fixes, and changes. One of which changed the way that we uh, start up the F-16. So this is a new quick start guide for y'all. Let's get started. Over here on the left side, uh, right underneath the canopy rail, you're gonna see the canopy switch. Just left click and hold that down. Canopy's gonna start to drop. Keep holding it until the latch is fully engaged, and then you can let go. Left click on the spider handle here to close that. A little bit of a disclaimer for you. Uh, this will not be the real life procedure for the F-16. Uh, real life startup procedure that is. If you're looking for the real life step-by-step -step procedure for the F-16 startup, uh, I, this is not the video for that. This is for those of you who are new or who just want to get the F-16 in the air with all the systems you need in order to start shooting down other jets and having fun. So uh, if you are, however, looking for the step-by-step -step real life procedure, um, I highly recommend Carbon's uh, definitive F-16 startup video that he released just recently. I've had him on the channel a couple times. He's an F-16 crew chief just like me. Um, I haven't been on the flight line in 15 years or more. I think it's been a little, little bit over that. Uh, and, but Carbon is actively crewing F-16s right now. Uh, in fact, while I'm making this video right now while I'm talking, he's probably on the flight line working. <laughs> but his startup video is awesome. It's a side-by-side -side video of him starting up the F-16 step-by-step, uh, step, uh, the real-life procedure here in the DCS sim, and then uh, he also has real-life footage of him being a crew chief going through the startup procedure with a real F-16 down in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. So you can see the procedure in the sim whilst seeing real-life footage of an actual crew chief uh, of Carbon himself running the startup procedure from the ground. So you can get the crew chief's perspective while you're going through the procedure with him. Really cool. I highly recommend it. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Link in the description. All right. So for those of you who don't want to remember all this, there's a lot of buttons and knobs and switches and stuff that you got to remember to flip on for the startup. I don't have time for that. Or I don't want to remember all that. I'm not writing that down. Let's just, is there just a button I can hit? Yes. You can hit Windows Home. So left Windows Home specifically, and that will start the automated startup procedure for the F-16 in DCS. However, keep in mind, if you're going to use that uh, automated startup, you're going to need to make sure you wait until you get the startup complete message at the top right of the screen. And this is because if you use the automated startup, it does a full INS alignment. It does not do a stored heading alignment. So a full INS alignment takes a lot longer. In my experience, I haven't timed it, but it feels like around 8 to 10 minutes total. I might be overestimating that. I don't know, but it's significantly longer than if you use a stored heading alignment. And unfortunately, if you're going to use that, that's the only option. It does a full INS alignment, which is fine. If you're willing to wait, hit Windows Home, go get a soda, come back, wait till you see Startup Complete at the top right of the screen, then you can taxi out. If you taxi out ahead of time, I've seen guys do this. They hit Windows Home and they wait until the jet feels and sounds like it's up and running and they taxi out and take off and their HSD isn't right, their waypoints aren't right, their targeting pod doesn't work, everything's busted, their flight path marker's all messed up and they're asking, what the heck did I do wrong? Well, you didn't wait. You have to wait until the INS is fully aligned. Uh, you can do that or if you are willing to learn the procedure I'm going to teach you now, I've gotten this thing in the air with this procedure in about two and a half minutes done with the new procedure the changes that we just got, probably closer to three, three and a half minutes, but uh, those are your options. So here we go. Let's turn on the jet. So electrical panel, we're going to right click to switch all these switches. Uh, right is up, left is down. So left click, right click. Same with rotary knobs, right click to turn it right, left click to turn it left. And then regular buttons, just left click to press it, left click to press it again. All right. So main power, uh, or electrical switch up to main power. You can turn on your UHF radio here ahead of time, right now, if you wanted to talk to somebody. As it is right now, I wouldn't be able to talk to anybody on the radio. If you want to, uh, before you start up, you can turn on your UHF standby here to main, and then you can tune the radio to whatever frequency you're looking for uh, to talk to your wingman or to the tower ahead of time before you start. Or you can go right-click again to both, and you'll be able to monitor guard frequency and transmit. It's up to you. I'm going to go to main. When you're ready to start, just uh, set the JFS switch down to start 2, or you can do start 1. It's up to you. 
I like start too because that's what I did in real life. From here, we're waiting until the engine RPM uh, percentage is up at uh, 18 to 20 percent before we go over the horn. But while we're waiting on that, we can start flipping everything on. So, IFF panel, turn the master knob to norm. You can set your lights any way you want. Your ECM panel here, set this up the way you want. Uh, I have a video on ECM if you want to watch that. It goes over a little bit of that. Up here, we're going to turn on our RWR by pressing the power button here. Turn jammer and RWR switches on here on the CMDS panel. We're going to turn on our buckets. This is your chaff flare buckets. Uh, for the mode, you can set it to standby, which you're not going to be able to do anything. Manual, semi, or auto for ECM if you have an ECM pod. Otherwise, if you're not using an ECM pod, go to bypass. In my opinion, this is, well, this is just my own personal preference. I like bypass. If you're in bypass, that is Every press of the chaff flare button uh, gives you one chaff flare. All right, left click and drag the symboli uh, Symbology uh, Brightness knob here for your Hemix all the way up. Arm your seat, set your parking brake up to parking brake, and come up here to these lights and we're gonna left click and drag the levers all the way up on both of them so they're both as bright as you can get them. The upper left roller here knob, we're gonna left click and drag this all the way up. That's your HUD symbology brightness. Over here, your artificial horizon here, you're gonna, you're gonna right click and drag up and down to get this centered, zero it out. Up here, all four of these switches, turn them all on. This one takes two clicks to go up to radar altimeter. Your DED brightness knob, That's this is your DED right here. Your DED brightness knobs right here. Just left click and drag up and down to make that bright or dim it. Uh, instrument panel brightness knob, console brightness, and you have your floodlights here. Back to the back right, you've got your avionics panel. We're gonna turn all this on except for the map. You don't need the map, there is no map. Turn everything on except for the mids. We're gonna leave that to off. This is part of the new procedure. Leave that alone, leave it to off. INS knob to stored heading. All right, after you've done all that, by now your RPMs should be at 20%, right? It really doesn't take that long, but I'm explaining every switch, so it took me a little longer, but typically by the time I'm done switching all that, this is just getting to 20%, you're gonna go over the horn. So what that means is putting this, uh, putting this throttle up to the idle uh, detent, which is this little white line, that's your idle line. This is the horn right here. So if you have your throttle already set with uh, stops and all that, and you've got it all programmed, you can just push it up into idle. If not, you can use the key bind over the horn. All right. That's gonna light the fire. Engine's gonna start spinning up here. Wait till everything's spun up. Systems are gonna start coming online. All right, we're waiting for that RWR to beep. There it is. All right. Now, if you want to turn your Hemix off, you can press DMS down uh, long. So press it and hold it down for more than a second and then let go. That'll turn it off. If you want to turn it back on, DMS down long, turn it back on. Now we need to align this. The reason we need to align this is if you don't have this aligned, you're going to see targets with your Hemix, a little square here, and you're going to look up at it, and you're going to think that's where your target is, but if it's not aligned, the target could be way over here, but you got the square around it up here. So to make sure the square is where the target actually is in real life, uh, we need to align this. So to do that, we're going to press list, zero for miscellaneous. R for Hemix, or recall as R, and then you're gonna dauber right. You see course, azimuth, and roll. So we're gonna select course, and you're gonna line these crosses up. Once you got them all lined up, press the enable switch depress button, and that'll align it. All right, and we're gonna hit select, and then select again to select the azimuth, and you can adjust this by using the RDR cursor switch. So right, RDR right, left, up and down. Get this all lined up. So put it right where it should be and then press select, select again, and then adjust your roll. RDR cursor switch left and right for roll. 
get that lined up. Hey, that worked out. Press select, and then dauber left to go to the main DED page. Press list, and the number six, and that'll show your INS page. You can see a line is flashing on your HUD. Ready is flashing on the DED, and you have 10 on your INS alignment. Your INS is now aligned. The stored heading is a lot quicker. With a full alignment, we'd still be aligning. So we're gonna come down here. Once it's aligned, flip this knob over to nav. Leave mids off. So the new procedure is we need to make sure that we check the times. We're gonna hit six on the uh, panel here for time. And you gotta confirm that it says GPS system. If it just says system, you're not ready. Wait till it says GPS system. And the other requirement is that the GPS switch here has been on for at least 60 seconds. Once you have both those criteria, then you can switch mids to on. And that's it. Now you're gonna start seeing the uh, HSD start populate, uh, start populating with all your uh, data link tracks. Good to go. Dauber left to set your DED to the main page. Press the nose wheel steering switch, throttle up, and taxi out. That's it. Hope this helps.